Welcome to the office in a beautiful fall day in Perth, Australia. From Mexico to China via Singapore, the Caribbean, and our special guest in San Francisco, you are watching the Selling Updates, the stock news. But first, two major announcements on this 1st of April. Desktop News changes hands and becomes the property of a major international television network. Oh, don't worry, nothing will change in the near future. However, one of the contra is to host these selling updates daily from out there in the ocean. And listen to this, it's not over. During yours truly's participation in the next Vendée Globe. I don't know about you, but I reckon we haven't heard the end of this. Anyway, for now, back to this week selling updates. The Singapore Sailings calendar welcomes a very popular event with the Youth Sailing Championships. Yacht racing has become a major sport there and several former Optimist World Champions are attending the event. With the fantastic energy of their coaches, some sailors show incredible talent and maybe future Olympic successes, who knows? The organizers welcome a record participation this year with 357 young sailors. With a solid and more stable breezes for the medal races, the courses are set as close as possible to the shore. In Techno 293, Thailand achieves a top two results with Shen Bunyong and Fong Ping. In the laser 4.7, Singaporean Bernie Chin wins the cup in front of his friend and compatriot Matthew Scott. In the 470s, Kimberlyn Lim and Savannah Sue are the undisputable winners. The huge fleet of optimists is dominated by Malaysian's Muhammad Shah ahead of his sparring partner Muhammad Rosani. The trophy's presentation is held during a magnificent final party. In Gorda, British Virgin Islands, 20 boats from 24 to 66 meters in length gather for three sumptuous days of racing. The Caribbean Super Yacht Regatta. A gentle breeze of 12 knots blowing on day one sees the 112 feet Nilaya winning the Class A ahead of Super Maxi Lipid with Vasco Vascoto calling tactics. In Division B, all of the first three places are taken by the Swans with Freya's victory on corrected time. Tampus Fujit, a new boat built along the lines of a J-Class, takes a sensational first place in Division C for her first outing. The second day offers a breathtaking selling show with wind blowing 18 knots. Nilaya confirms air supremacy, but the battle for runner-up is fierce between Ohana and Itai Ross. In Class B, Twizzle wins the battle ahead of Freya. Both are equal first at the end of the day. Moonbird puts the record straight with a magnificent victory ahead of Sarafin in Class C. Following a final day held in the sparkling waters of Virgin Gorda, Nilaya with 1-1-2 score sheet wins the trophy ahead of the J-Class Rainbow in Class A. With a similar score, Freya takes the trophy ahead of Twizzle in Class B. While the Fitzroy Dubois design Moonbird takes a narrow victory in Class C. The Mex ORC Copa is the second round of the 2014 Offshore Mexico Championships. The event takes place in the state of Jalisco in the Baya de Banderas on the Pacific coast. Held in very light winds, the battle is in full swing on the day one and is dominated by Grand Illusion in ORR1, Veloce in ORR2 and Generalissimo in ORR3 classes. The fleet of boats ranging from 46 to 70 feet has a lot on on day two held in unsteady conditions. The international teams demonstrate a high level of performance the conditions harden over the course of the championships and the ranking starts to emerge. Despite the return of Veloz, Grand Illusion holds on to the lead of a Vincitor in the overall standing. Hamachi gets the upper hand of a Veloce and Alela and secures the trophy in ORR2 class. 
In ORR3, Bandido sells a clean series and overtakes early pace setter generally Simo second and Dreadnought taking third. A special guest with me this evening, a real yachting legend, a great sailor, Loic Perron, who will talk to us about his new adventures. Hi Loic, where are you at the moment and what are you doing? I'm in Alameda, California, next to San Francisco. I was fortunate to spend a full year here with Team Artemis Racing. It's really a great place. So, Loic, you have been signed up by Artemis Racing for the 35th America's Cup? Indeed, I have. Officially, since a few days, we obviously talked about it for a few months. There are many reasons for it, but the first and foremost is that they have asked me, which is really nice. Therefore, Loic, what exactly are you going to do with Artemis? As usual, a bit of everything. I like to do a bit of everything. I often say that my main specialty is to be a generalist. But more specifically, I'm the second helmsman. So I'll have to break Nathan Outrage's leg if I want to replace him from time to time. And you guys have uh, already started sailing with the AC-45s? Yes, uh, sailing has already begun. We launched our two boats here a few hours ago. We did our first training session towards the next America's Cup. I'm not implying that we have to learn everything again, but the goal in this sailing game is to actually go yacht racing early on. How do you set up a team when, in all honesty, there has been so little information, at least for the public, it must be hard? Well, hang on. Um, yes, it can be complex, but the difference between the general public and those who are a little bit more involved is obviously the level of information available. So it allows us to have sometimes fairly vague and sometimes quite precise ideas on what to expect. So we're not standing still waiting for the protocol to be released. On the contrary, we try to anticipate and we fortunately have enough information. Which I'll keep for myself, of course. Yeah, okay, fair enough. It's the name of the game anyway. One design elements. Yeah, that's right. This is uh, following a genuine request from the Australian, the challenger of records. There's less experience and a smaller budget there. So, to be honest, one design could, for example, bring the boats closer together and uh, reduce the cost. Significantly, actually. If tomorrow we were told that all wings will be identical and built in China, we won't need to bring in an army of engineers to design them. We will obviously follow this very carefully. But then there is something else with you, Loic. You are Virtual Regatta's ambassador and you have a project. Oh, yeah, plenty of them. With my friend Philippe Guignet and all of the Virtual Regatta players, I would like to invite the community to discover something. Keeping in mind, this is just a project right now and it shouldn't be taken for granted yet. But I'd like everyone to discover what is an AC-72, our old catamaran, those jet fighters we had here last time. And why not imagine, and that's the beauty of virtual sailing, we can dream of anything, go and cross an ocean. So, not the Atlantic, because we do that every day, but why not the Pacific? Since we are here in San Francisco, I'd like to welcome everybody to virtually take off from Alameda with the AC-72 Artemis. I know, it's a silly project I have, but why not sail across the Pacific and pay a visit to the Challenger of Record? I think it would be nice, and we're trying to implement that. The challenge would be to do battle with Artemis Racing 72 for the Pacific Derby. Everybody's welcome. And we all go flat out and visit Hamilton Island. Not bad. Yes, and we would go super fast. It's actually going to be very interesting because for the first time, the virtual regatta fans will cross an ocean at speed never reached before. Just crossing weather systems much faster. Well, look, thank you very much for this great chat together.
Thanks to you, we were a bit long, but that's all right. Thank you, and good night. Rendezvous next week, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and fair sailing.